There are so many challenges when it comes to uh, recovery from mental health. And um, in addiction work, particularly when people come, come in for treatment the first time, there's a huge identity crisis from who they used to be to who they're going to be. So in spite of all the chaos and everything that goes with it, there's huge stigma around recovery in of itself. So for example, the family and everyone and the circles that the individual came from, people might be thinking, well, who's this person going to be now? And the individual themselves also thinks, who am I going to be? Who, what's going to happen now? What are all these kind of support groups that I go to, faith-based organizations, whatever it is the individual chooses to um, take their recovery forward? Um, but one of the biggest challenges for us as society is helping people deal with the stigma of it. So supporting people in getting help, supporting people in showing up authentically, if they're ever telling people to bring their authentic self to the party. And um, when people do bring their authentic self, it can often be very triggering for other members within the system or the environment and um, this is something that we need to be aware of as coaches or clinicians or HR people or anything like that is the systemic impact of a stigmatized uh, environment that um, is going into recovery so we're not so the individual might be going into treatment but uh, that individual comes from an environment that is going to be changing due to the systemic pressure um, and when somebody starts to change the way that they show up in an environment um, it has impact on the on the system. So to give you an example, in the workplace environment, you're working with one of your colleagues, you're all in IT together, you're all doing the work, and your colleague gets promoted to, to manager. So all of a sudden, they're no longer your IT uh, buddy, they're now your um, boss and uh, because they've taken on a new role their psyche can undergo um, change yeah they might uh, they might um, be great managers uh, or they might uh, become dickheads <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. Sorry, I'm struggling with fancy words. But the point is the the new role that gets t uh, the person, the individual takes on, it triggers stuff inside of them. They start to behave in a certain way, which impacts the system. And um, this happens all the time. It can happen in families when... Uh, when a family has a child for the first time or when a family has a second child, um, when the marriage goes from, um, you know, be, be, being um, boyfriend and girlfriend to husband and wife to mother and father, uh, that's a real kind of biological change that happens within the family system and the roles change as well. And it's... Um, it's, I mean, it's interesting for me personally. I've just uh, I've become a grandfather. So, so what does that mean for me? How, has, how have I changed? And um, the world has changed a lot with technology and leadership has changed. And um, how am I as a leader in my role and how do I communicate to the outside world? How do I talk about mental illness and mental health when I personally have my own uh, struggles with that? And how can I share my story? personal story in an authentic way and to be okay with the projections that are going to go around that story because of the environment of stigma. And now there's something called internal oppression. So internal oppression is where you believe the 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 beliefs of the oppressor. So those people that that judged you, you believe. Yep. So, for example, in my uh, addiction days, I was it was 
oppressed in the sense of, oh, those people are bad people, those junkies, those addicts, those people are bad. And then when I got into recovery, those thoughts still plagued me. So I would believe that I'm a bad father, I'm a bad employer, I'm a bad this and bad that. And that stigma and shame has lived with me for many years in spite of all the work that I've done externally to try and um, relieve myself from that shame. And it's a continuous journey. So there's the internal oppression and then there's the external oppression as, as I come out and I try and reintegrate in the, to the world. Is that like, oh, who's, who's this now? Who does he think he is? What's he doing? What's his qualifications? How dare he do all that sort of stuff? Or there's the other projection of like, oh yes, well, he sorted himself out, so what he did must help for everyone else, which it's also isn't true. And um, I really need to personally try and stay humble with this and to actually stick with what we, what we believe and talk about, which is kind of multiple pathways to recovery. And I just want to say something else. Everybody um, is impacted by addiction. So it doesn't matter what your drug is. Yep, there is a behavior that people get involved in, that they stay involved in, in spite of the negative consequences. Um, particularly workaholism, is, a, is for an example. And it's very good for an organization in the short term to have people that are workaholic. Yeah, um, But in the long term, it's not very good for the culture. And uh, we find ourselves with technology today, being connected all the time. Um, our families are with us all the time. Our work's with us all the time. The world is ubiquitous. I'm trying to use a fancy word, which basically means it's everywhere. It's pervasive in our society. And um, I struggle with it. I struggle. I mean, I've just kind of woken up and I'm thinking about this work and... Yesterday I posted some videos and the feedback I was getting was, oh, that's inappropriate, we shouldn't be doing that, or that's going to kind of come and bite us. And I've had to kind of step back and just pause and just think, okay, here I am, here's my role, here's what I've been, um, here's what I've got agency to do so I can go and do this sort of stuff. However, even though I've got the power to do this stuff, what is the impact on those people around me and what is the message that I'm communicating? And some days I get it right and some days I get it wrong. Anyway, um, yeah, I don't want to uh, talk too much because if I do, I lose people and they don't watch the videos. Um, but also if I try and get the whole message into a little, into a little bite-sized hook, um, it, it, it doesn't have the impact and people don't get the chance to kind of sit and ponder and to think about what's being proposed here. Um, we live in a, a, a very um, westernized uh, mental health system here which has really kind of um, neglected the importance of community in, in, in recovery and uh, this is why we uh, do so much work with Cricket SA and the Hubs program in trying to create a youth sport to influence conversation around community that uh, can create opportunities uh, for growth and mental well-being for, for, for everyone. Um, I do hope I'm making sense today from an archetypical perspective and from a structure. The reason we have a structure is to help rebuild people's ego post-treatment. So there's like, okay, so this and this and this, so they can develop their psyche to step into their roles. So, yep, so very simply, you know, I was a, an addicted father many years ago. And now I'm a recovering father. What does that mean? How am I going to show up as the best person I can? Yeah. Um, 
yeah it's a journey so enjoy the ride today's the day of the the great mother of mother earth that supports us that provides for us that nurtures us it's the matriarchy think of a herd of elephants um where, where the, the matriarchal elephants all circle around the the bull calf and uh, the power of the elephant and um yeah and a friend of mine uh, passed last night his name was lambert pringle and um it's quite strange because i thought about him a lot yesterday and then i found out at one o'clock this morning that he passed so lambert if you're out there and watching um yeah god bless my friend Lots of love, everyone. Take care. And uh, another friend of mine said, why do you never mention God? So I'm going to mention God now. Hello, God. Thank you for everything. Um, yeah. Lots of love. Take care. And be nice out there. Bye-bye.